think I'd rather just focus in on recommendation number 17. And I think um, when you look at the caveats, I suppose, in relation to the Citizens' Assembly and what they laid out, it's like really understanding, I suppose, the Citizens' Assembly idea of what decriminalisation actually is um, and whether justice has a role in decriminalisation. Because if it's decriminalised, justice doesn't have a role at all. You know, so even if we look at whether we're looking at that administrative um, piece, because the kind of block seems to be, well, we can't do administrative sentences. And it's like, well, why are we saying that we're even looking for administrative offences in terms of actually completely removing possession in relation to any sort of uh, diversion? Because not everyone needs a diversion. There's plenty of people within the walls of power here that use drugs that will never need uh, a diversion. Uh, that's a huge amount of resource and money to send every single person who is stopped and has a substance in their pocket, uh, assuming that they need supports and help. Um, obviously, addiction affects a minority of people who use drugs. So the minority of people who use drugs is where the recommendations for me, the rest of the recommendations for me come in in relation to those social determinants, poverty, trauma, all of those, so that people don't use drugs in a way that's chaotic and is accumulative across whole, whole communities. So what I would like to really understand maybe um, from, uh, from yourself, uh, Paul, is in relation to what you understand decriminalisation to be, what you feel the members understood decriminalisation to be, forgetting for a moment the idea that there may be some questions around, there's any sort of constitutionality questions or any sort of guard of powers questions around stop and search, but what does true decriminalisation look like? Because prohibition hasn't worked, that is the evidence. And also decriminalisation of the user, decriminalisation of addiction, um, doesn't also reduce drug use. And I think some people maybe think that we're going to reduce drugs in the country or drug use because of decriminalisation, but really what we're going to do is not compound the harm and give people a way out. So I'm wondering from user perspective, and obviously it's up to the Oireachtas to legislate on this, but what is decriminalisation from your, dis uh, your perspective and the members' perspective? We were clear that, and it's described in our report and our statements, it's a paradigm shift, right, to take it out of a criminal system and put it into a health system and a health aid. It's not a hybrid. We're not saying a bit of both. Yeah. Uh, we're saying a fundamental shift out of a criminal system and into a health aid approach. To substantiate that or to make that work, there are supports needed in terms of dissuasion and diversion. Quite rightly, not everybody needs to be. Somebody might not have a problem. They don't have to be diverted off somewhere else. But we are very clear it's a paradigm shift out of a route to market, currently that's a criminal system, to a health system. And take the stigma, take stigmatisation out of it. You're being dealt with in a very fundamental, different way. Does that involve a guard still stopping and searching you, finding you in possession, and him deciding whether you need diversion or not diversion? So the whole threat of stop and search is a criminali criminalisation back a step because it still involves policing. So does, should you only be stopped and searched if you are, I suppose, there's suspicion around whether you are selling drugs or whether you are involved in sale and supply? You know, so a, a person who's on the street who may have heroin in their pocket is quite yeah. clearly in and out of Merchant's Key is not a drug, you know what I mean? So there's all those differentiations. So where do the, poli the police force come in at all and should they only actually be involved if there's suspicion around criminal activity? And if possession of a drug is not a criminal activity, why should stop and search exist for something that's not a criminal activity? May, may I come in just, Deputy, uh, because it, our Senator, it's, it's a very, obviously, complicated set of questions. And we've done up a, the report itself has quite a lot of detail about what the Citizens' Assembly meant by a comprehensive health-led approach. And then we've sent in a, a sort of supplementary paper last evening as well, which hopefully mm. will give you a much better understanding, A, of the confusing different ways that decriminalisation can be explained and meant, because very different meanings can be attributed with the same term. So it's a highly problematic word. Um, so what the Assembly did, instead of trying to define decriminalisation, they defined the policy objectives that they want. And the objectives that they want is a combination of a version of decriminalisation that supports 
helps diversion and it supports dissuasion. So the two points of reference that they that you can equate their model to is Austria and Portugal. Both of them have health, comprehensive health-led approaches. Um, and in both cases, there is a role for authorities other than the health services as the first point of contact. And that includes the police, both in Portugal and in Austria. The police, because the um, version of the decriminalisation in use in those countries, and this is the version recommended by the citizens' assemblies, possession of drug use continues to be an offence it continues to be illegal and prohibited under law. And so the per first point of engagement, whether that be the police or other authorities that find a person in possession, they have a legal mandate then to refer that person to the health-led mm. intervention. Um, and that, in theory, should be the end of the police involvement or the end of the, author the authorities' involvement, other than in the case where somebody then doesn't cooperate with the, if you like, the dissuasion sanctions imposed for example, by the dissuasion committees in Portugal or by the health authorities in Austria, they will then potentially run the risk of, of committing an offence. So in Portugal, there's an offence called disobedience of... And, you know, so, so, it's, so, it's, so there's the issue, mm -hmm, though, even mm -hmm. in the old understandings from Portugal, which yes. is 20 years old, which they would see that their decriminalisation model now is completely outdated. Because when we look at the fact then that there would be even later sanctions mm -hmm. where addiction doesn't work that way, so it's still criminalising addiction, but actually decriminalising personal mm. drug use. Because if you're a recreational mm. drug user, the likelihood of you actually not fulfilling out the sanction mm. or being stopped and searched again and again because you're not from an overpleased community, mm. you still have a system then where if you're in addiction, yeah. You, it could take 10 years for you to find any sort of abstinence or recovery, and you could be stopped and searched and stopped and searched and stopped and searched and not be able I to take keep up your stop. appointments. So, sorry, and also, I, yeah. But also, in relation to the current system that exists, the, the 2017 proposal mm. that the department are saying that they're running out an adult caution, would mm. you also see that as not being decriminalisation, that that's also just, we're going to temporarily say it's a health issue, and yeah. then we're going to say it's not a health issue, it's a criminal issue. I suppose maybe the starting point here is that there's two very distinct versions of decriminalisation. One is the 100% decriminalisation, which we heard from legal experts at the Citizens' Assembly explaining is tantamount to or equivalent to legalising possession. Okay, so there would be no role in that situation for any Within authorities... Limits. Pardon? Within limits. There'd still be limits set on well, the amount. Well, so anything that would be... The limit would be personal possession. So obviously if somebody is found with drugs in their possession that is above and beyond, beyond the limit, personal yeah. possession, that would be an offence under yeah. the supply and distribution legislation. But there is a version of decriminalisation that is equivalent to legalisation. And that version is something that the Citizens' Assembly voted against. So what they voted for instead was a health-led approach, a comprehensive health-led approach, which isn't legalisation. The, the, uh, there is still an offence. Now, the nature of that offence has to be defined, but there is an offence under law, so possession of drugs would remain illegal and would remain prohibited. It's just that the way it's dealt with by the state changes, as Paul said, from a criminal justice-led approach to a health intervention-led approach. But is it, though? If it's, it's still criminal justice-led because it still allows people to be stopped and searched and stopped and searched. So the nature of diversion is that it requires a legal basis for people to be diverted into so the health So it's services. criminal, it's actually then still criminal justice led with a potential yeah. health outcome. So if you, want, if you unpack the concept of decriminalisation, what are you looking for? You're looking to arguably reduce down the prospects or eliminate the prospects of somebody receiving, uh, being prosecuted and being convicted and receiving a custodial sentence. So that's, if you like, unbundling the concept of decriminalisation. Now, there is also, so the version here is supporting diversion and dissuasion as well as decriminalisation. And that's the detail in Recommendation 17, is that's what the Assembly recommended rather than a version that achieves legalising of the possession. Okay, Chair, thank you. Fair, we had two lawyers um, with two contrary views about what was decriminalisation and what was legalisation, and mm. they both differed. Mm. One gave a view called just to interpret, another said, no, 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 if you decriminalise, that's, that's fully legal. We were very clear. We just want to take it out of the criminal justice system. We, we weren't. Yeah. yeah. We were unambiguous about it. Yeah. Because, but then take that's it. saying two different things. Because if we want to take it out of the criminal justice system, then we also want to take it out of the policing. 
we can't we can't uncouple policing on the street of people with possession of the drugs from the criminal justice system. No, and, and Chair, you, you could look at other, other of our recommendations, which did address the whole issue of stigma. If you stay, take stop and search, yeah. you, that's, that hugely leads to stigma of very public uh, stop exactly. and searches. You know. But to be frank, there's, we did, as in the summary note as well, you know, summarise those outstanding issues yes. that the Oireachtas will need to decide on. Uh, that will bring further clarity to it yes. than we felt we could at that point. Okay, I've got